the minimum of that state long-arm statute and see if my defendants, the defendants' act, actions are listed as one of the things that qualifies for statutory authorization. Yes, they can listen to the state. And there's that data out-of-state publisher um, who writes a libel article that he uh, referenced about someone located in, say, California. The knowledge that the um, harm would have an effect on the plaintiff's home state um, is enough to establish personal jurisdiction. Um, and the court was referencing the Jones v. Calder case, right, and other similar libel cases. So we know that we have, obviously, an issue of personal jurisdiction, as we do every case in the session. Um, what's the first thing you do when you have a personal jurisdiction uh, problem? Um, first thing you do is try to establish what type of jurisdiction. Is it specific uh, jurisdiction, general, um, in rem, quasi in rem. There's going to be a fifth one we're going to add, and then we're done, um, which we haven't learned that yet. Uh, but there's something that we're going to discuss a little bit later, but essentially there's two steps to establishing personal jurisdiction. Oh, of course, that's Okay, so we have statutory authorization, and we have constitutional. Okay, two. Now, all right, so all that means is that, again, we'll spend we'll actually do cases on this, but for the purposes of understanding, <coughs> for the purpose of, purpose of understanding um, this particular case. So the statutory authorization, all 50 states have uh, what they call long-arm statutes, right? And so Kentucky has a long-arm statute, California has a long-arm statute, um, they all do. Um, and so first you look and say, I need to determine if there's personal jurisdiction in Kentucky. So I'm gonna look and see what Kentucky's long arm statute is. And the long arm statute says if one of these things are present, you can make an out of state defendant come to Kentucky and defend themselves. They'll have things like conduct a business in the state of Kentucky, Kentucky, enter into a contract in the state of Kentucky. So every statute will have those things listed. Um, and so you make sure that those things, you know, they qualify for the statutory authorization. And you say, yes, you know, that works. They have uh, it says if they do business here, but they, they enter into a contract in the state of Kentucky, I, I have satisfied the statutory authorization. Then you do the constitutional analysis, and that's when you ask yourself, is there is it fair? And you determine if it's fair based on the due process clause by determining if there's general jurisdiction, specific jurisdiction, quasi in room, in and so on. So it's just a two-step process to determine personal jurisdiction. Um, we will spend more time on the statutory authorization stuff, but again, it's just based on a long-arm statute. And you, so if you're practicing in, in Kentucky and you're trying to bring a suit against someone in Indiana, you're going to look up, just Google Indiana's long-arm statute, and it's going to tell you um, whether or not, what the, what the criteria is to bring that lawsuit in Indiana. Any questions about this before I move forward? Yes? So are both steps required regardless of whether there's statutory authorization or not? Um, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Are both these required? There, there are both steps are required to establish personal jurisdiction. Does that answer? I think so. You sure? Okay, so again, just, it's just, um, you look and see, oh, I have to do a statutory authorization. Let me look up that state long-arm statute and see if my defendants, the defendants' act, actions are listed as one of the things that qualify for statutory authorization. Yes, they can listen to the state. And then your second step is to do what we're doing, what type of personal protection. Okay, so moving forward. All right, so um, since we know we have to look at both statutory and constitutional authority, um, we first look to see what California's long-arm statute says. Um, I think it's on page 119, but don't quote me. Um, last paragraph. So California's long-arm statute is one of the cool ones that basically just says courts may exercise personal jurisdiction on any basis consistent with the Constitution of California and the United States. So some states, unlike Kentucky, that's all they say. So you know what that means? Okay, satisfied. So you just go directly to this. If it lists items that, that have to be met, uh, like Kentucky long-arm statute, then you have to say, oh, you know, they conduct business here, or yes, they entered into a contract in Kentucky. So it's either, it's either gonna list, the long-arm statute's either gonna list what criteria you need to satisfy to meet that state's long-arm statute, or we like California, we just say, look, as long as it, uh, it meets Cal I mean, the constitutional standard, that's good enough for us. We like California, they don't make us do that extra step. We love those kind of states, okay? Like, Illinois is another one that lists them all. And we'll spend a whole class on it and look at different long-arm statutes, but I just need you to understand it for this case. So um, what does that mean in terms of analysis of personal jurisdiction? It just means you just have to use um, the international shoe test. You don't have to do a statutory analysis because they said as long as it complies with the Constitution, that's good enough for the state of California. Um, so here you're going to use um, the, the specific jurisdiction test. So you're going to look at minimum contact uh, plus fairness plus purposeful availment um, and the factors that we discussed on fairness on the Burger King case, those five fairness factors. Um, so the court then, um, in this case, discusses the Jones v. Calder case um, that we were talking about a little earlier. And again, as your colleague stated, um, the Jones v. Calder case, essentially there's a reporter um, in Florida who um, wrote an article for the National Enquirer about Sir Jones, a well-known actress um, who lived and worked in California. Uh, the president and editor of the magazine uh, reviewed and approved the article and the article was published. Uh, so Jones um, sued the reporter and the editor for libel in the state of California. Um, the defendants moved to uh, have the case dismissed because they said there was a uh, lack of service of process, um, meaning they weren't properly notified that there's a lawsuit against them, and they said the defendant doesn't have any minimum contacts with California. We wrote the article in Florida. So um, the court in that case references what we care about for our rule of law, which is the effects test. That's why we're reading this case. The effects test. Um, so the court mentions the effects test um, in the Jones v. Calder case um, that was used for determining whether there's purposeful availment in the context of defamation. These are defamation uh, fact patterns that we're dealing with. So again, uh, the court mentions in the Jones v. Calder case um, the effects test, and that's what they use for determining purposeful, purposeful availment in a defamation case. Um, so essentially what they said, I'm just going to read it straight from the textbook, um, a state can't exercise jurisdiction over individual defendants based on the effects that their out-of-state conduct had on the state that is seeking to exercise jurisdiction. So again, um, what is the effect test? Essentially, a state can't exercise jurisdiction over the individual defendants. So a state can't exercise jurisdiction over the individual defendants based on the effects that their out-of-state conduct had on the state that is seeking to exercise jurisdiction. All right, one last time. State can exercise jurisdiction over the individual defendants based on the effects that their out-of-state conduct had on the state that is seeking to exercise jurisdiction. Um, so the holding in that Jones v. Calder case that they're referencing in our case um, is that the Supreme Court in the Jones case disagreed with the defendants and held that California could exercise personal jurisdiction uh, based on the effects test of their Florida conduct in California. The court noted uh, that the individual defendants again wrote or edited an article that they knew would have a potentially uh, devastating impact upon Jones, and they knew that the brunt of that injury would be felt in California, where the movie industry is, um, where she lives and works. And it's also the court noted in that Jones v. Calder case is that California is where the National Enquirer has their largest circulation. So they said, look, it's reasonable uh, that they should have known that, although the article again was published in Florida, that it would have a devastating impact on um, Jones in California. Um, and so 
what the court is trying to do in this case is basically figure out um, how the effects test that we just covered from Calder can be applied in an internet scenario. So again, they're borrowing a test that's used for defamation cases and saying, you know, we don't currently have a test to evaluate when personal jurisdiction can be asserted in an internet scenario. So we think that this case from the defamation context would be a great test. So they're trying to figure out how to apply it in this situation. Um, so the Polish court gets some guidance from holdings in other cases um, and essentially come up with this sliding scale analysis, uh, which is what you will use as attorneys when you leave this beautiful law school. Um, and so the court mentions using a sliding scale analysis for internet cases, I believe on page 120 of this paragraph. Um, and essentially what they say is at the end of one scale are situations where the defendant clearly does business over the internet. So you've got these two extremes, sliding scale. So at one end, um, in a situation where the defendant clearly does business over the internet, Amazon, right? Um, if the defendant enters into contracts with residents um, of foreign jurisdictions, meaning outside their state, that involve the knowing repeated transmission of files over the internet, personal jurisdiction is proper. So I'm going to say that again because what this means is this is how you determine with a website or internet scenario whether or not a particular state has personal jurisdiction over that internet creator. Uh, meaning Um, and so what the court is trying to do in this case is basically figure out um, how the effects test that we just covered from Calder can be applied in an internet scenario. So again, they're borrowing a test that's used for defamation cases and saying, you know, we don't currently have a test to evaluate when personal jurisdiction can be asserted in an internet scenario. So we think that this case from the defamation context would be a great test. So they're trying to figure out how to apply it in this situation. Um, so the Polish court gets some guidance from holdings in other cases um, and essentially come up with this sliding scale analysis, uh, which is what you will use as attorneys when you leave this beautiful law school. Um, and so the court mentions using a sliding scale analysis for internet cases, I believe on page 120 of this paragraph. Um, and essentially what they say is at the end of one scale are situations where the defendant clearly does business over the internet. So you've got these two extremes, sliding scale. So at one end, um, in a situation where the defendant clearly does business over the internet, Amazon, right? Um, if the defendant enters into contracts with residents um, of foreign jurisdictions, meaning outside their state, that involve the knowing repeated transmission of files over the internet, personal jurisdiction is proper. So I'm going to say that again because what this means is this is how you determine with a website or internet scenario whether or not a particular state has personal jurisdiction over that internet creator, uh, meaning website creator. So again, um, if the defendant clearly does business over the internet, and enters into contracts with residents of foreign jurisdictions that involve the knowing repeated transmission of files over the internet, personal jurisdiction is proper. So if you have a dating website where you're perhaps with the transmission of files, you're uploading stuff, you're getting approval for stuff on Facebook, you're like, yeah, we approve your picture, no, we took your picture down. You know, you're, if there's some type of monetary uh, business that's being done, it's going to be considered proper to have personal jurisdiction in whatever state you're giving. Um, but I'll give some more specific examples. So again, you know, at one end of the scale is yes, the defendant clearly does business over the internet, all right, Amazon. At the other end of the sliding scale, um, the opposite end is where the defendant has only posted information. There's no business transaction. It's like an informational site. So they've only posted information on the internet, uh, which is accessible to users in other jurisdictions. So it's, it's like a passive website, right? Um, that only makes information available. And if that's the case, there's no grounds for personal jurisdiction. So if you're just posting information on the, you know, FYI, um, this is all you want to know about the solar system. Um, that's considered a passive website. There's no business interaction going on. Um, and so there's no personal jurisdiction. Um, the middle ground is where you have an interactive website where users can exchange information with the host computer. So you see the extremes. One, they're clearly doing business and, ex and exchanging files, information. Uh, there's uh, monetary transactions going. Then you have the other extreme where it's just a passive website that's posting information uh, up there for the reader, anybody to see, right? And then you have the middle ground, which is what most attorneys end up arguing uh, before the judge, um, which is where you have an interactive website where users can exchange the information with the host computer. So in those cases, jurisdiction is determined by examining the level, right, of interactivity and, and the commercial nature of the exchange of information. So they look at, okay, how much exchange is going on? And again, as attorneys, it's your job to say, oh, this, you know, they're exchanging information every day or on a weekly basis. And the other side says, yeah, they're saying that, but in a, you know, that just started recently. Like in a two-year period, they only exchange information regularly for two months and then it was dry. And so it's your job to look at the facts and convince the judge that this is a very interactive exchange, you know, um, website, so as opposed to more informational. Um, so there's not like a clear-cut way. So even for exam purposes, I just care that you know the test uh, that applies and that you can apply the facts to it. It's really not a right or wrong answer um, with this particular thing. Yes? So in the middle ground, I, I think it's, did you say um, the person jurisdiction was determined by just the amount of exchanges? Yep. Is it? Okay, yep. I'm what you think. Yeah, you said. <coughs> All right. Um, so where on the scale does the court say the problem of this case belongs? And what's the court's reasoning? Where do they say it belongs? Attorney uh, Walsh. So they put it on the end with the just posting. Mm -hmm. um, and they say that because he didn't know that they were, because the business was in California, that they don't deserve to know Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. Um, so we like this. They said, look, uh, there's no evidence um, in the record suggesting that they targeted um, the state of California um, and no evidence that any California resident even visited the website, downloaded anything from the website. Um, and so, you know, they're like, there's really no evidence of sufficient contacts here, essentially what they're saying. Um, so pa uh, so Pavlovich's alleged conduct um, in posting a passive website, the court said, on the internet is not by itself sufficient enough to subject California to personal jurisdiction. Just a passive website, right? Um, creating a site like placing a product, the court said creating a site is like uh, placing a product in the stream of commerce, uh, maybe felt nationwide or even worldwide, but without more, it's not enough to be considered an act where they're purposely availing themselves. So they're acknowledging, yes, with the internet, the way it's set up, when you post information, yeah, potentially can, you know you potentially get essentially anywhere in the world. But in an internet scenario, they're saying that's not enough to say that you placed um, an item, I want to say product in the stream of commerce. Now we're dealing with the internet situation, okay? Um, and so, how does the court address attorney, Blank, sorry. How does the court address the plaintiff's um, DVD CCA argument that there's purposeful availment um, of the benefits of the forum state uh, because Pavlovich knew that posting it would harm not only the licensing entity, um, but also the motion picture, uh, computer, or technology industry centered in California. So how do they address the plaintiff saying, look, there was purposeful availment because you know he knew when he posted this stuff it was gonna impact these industries in California. What do they say? I think it's on this 121 second and third paragraph. Hopefully. How do they address the plaintiff's argument that there is purposeful availment because Pavlovich knew when he posted that information it was going to impact those industries in California? Do you have a co-counsel? Yeah, I thought you were a co-counsel. Who, who uh, Hall? Wall. Wall, sorry. That's okay. Um, I think it's because even though they knew that it might hurt the industry, they didn't know it was going to hurt the specific plaintiff. Right. 
And so they didn't think that there was a problem there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, and so they also said um, that the plaintiff in this case is essentially asking the court to adopt a rule that the court should be able to ex exercise jurisdiction over the defendant because he should have known that his conduct may harm industries with the California plaintiff. Um, and, and they said that the court said that, you know, this is not, you're asking us to, to adopt a very broad interpretation um, of the effects test, which would essentially eliminate the purposeful availment element. And they said, you know, we're not willing to do that. Um, and they said that uh, finding jurisdiction under the facts of this particular case would subject essentially all intentional tort feasors whose conduct may harm industries in California to the jurisdiction of California. So the court says that would be too broad of an interpretation of the effects rule. We don't want a situation where there's no purposeful availment and, and a state can assert jurisdiction over non-resident defendants. And the policy reason behind that um, is just, you know, they said this isn't good for businesses, this isn't good, you know, in terms of thinking of it in terms of the fairness prong of the Constitution. You know, again, we don't want California to, to just be able to assert jurisdiction over pretty much everybody in the United States. Um, we want them, to, you know, you need to purposely avail yourself to California. And that's why that purposeful availment prong is so important because before the court um, established that criteria, it was very easy, it was much easier to assert personal jurisdiction over a non-resident defendant with no contact with the state. I don't want to be in a position where I have to go and defend myself in Kansas, no offense, Professor Rothstein, uh, but I don't have any contacts there. I didn't purposely avail myself to the state of Kansas. I don't want to have to travel there back and forth for a lawsuit. Um, so this purposeful availment thing, I personally feel is one of the most important advancements of modern, um, modern day personal jurisdiction jurisprudence. I think it's really, really important. Um, so the court is saying that a defendant's knowledge of, of um, harmful conduct um, or conduct that may harm industries in the state. Um, are they saying that it's completely irrelevant, um, Attorney Harper, to the question of whether there's personal jurisdiction? Is the court saying that the defendant's knowledge of the harm may um, cause, or the conduct may cause harm to a particular industry in the state? Are they saying that's just not relevant? Not necessarily, no. Okay, what are they saying then? Very good. They're saying that if, if they talk about this by itself, it's not sufficient enough. Excellent. So they're saying no. The court is saying no. We're not saying it's not relevant. It's relevant. You know that uh, a defendant's conduct, they know that their conduct may potentially harm um, someone in another state, but they're saying that that knowledge alone, as Attorney uh, Harper said, is not enough to establish <coughs> purposeful availment, that they're express, expressly aiming at the forum state um, as required by the effects state. So they're saying, no, we think it's relevant that they might know, yeah, my, my conduct may harm someone in another state, but they're saying that alone isn't enough. You still need that purposeful availment uh, prong. And so let's talk briefly about Judge Baxter's dissent in this case. Um, and just tell me, uh, anyone that wants to volunteer, um, if you agree or disagree with Justice Baxter's dissent. So he completely disagrees um, with the decision in this case. Um, specifically, he disagrees with the court's analysis and states that the record indicates that Pavlovich knew that the intended target of his conduct was not an individual person or business, but he knew that it was entire industries. He knew when he created that anti-copying uh, software that it was, gonna, uh, it was going to impact the tech industry. So Justice Baxter is saying he knew what he was doing. And he said the record indicates that Pavlovich knew that at least two of his intended targets, and I'll get your question in just a minute, um, which would have been, again, the movie industry and the computing industry, were sitting in California. So like he knew what industry was going to impact. He knew they were, you know, the big hubs were in the state of California, Justice Baxter is saying this. So he said the record supports the trial court's conclusion that the defendant's actions were expressly aimed at California. Because he knew that when he put that side up, everyone knows the movie industry for the United States is in California. What do you think? I just like, I like the opinion. And then the last one in the last sentence is that Pavlovich may still pay community that not in California. So they still have, you know, ways to that. Yes. Um, I see similarities between that and the, um, Arizona case where it was like um, Arizona should have jurisdiction of that accident that happened um, because they have an interest in protecting their highways just like that in California they have an interest in protecting their industry so, so you see the same, you see you see a similar parallel to that particular case anyone who's, who agrees with Baxter just to show a hand you did just to an extent I'll confess that I'm kind of biased because I come from the music world but this is a situation similar to this are very common occurrence the copyright trademark trademark because with this sort of anti this, uh, this ensures that you know everybody who worked on the product gets paid that gives positions for actors in the movie when you develop software like this that create a loophole, that means, like, in a musical, for example, these musicians are not getting paid their royalties, which is unfair to them. So I, if, do I agree that in this context, at this, at this point in time, the, that that knowledge should have been enough? No, but in a more modern setting, yeah, I think now it was going to require more. I mean, if, if we're being honest, as Jessica Burson, it is stealing, right? You're getting um, materials that you didn't pay for, right? Um, and I feel so bad because she's right, but there's just Robin Hood part of me that feels like they charge so much for this stuff. And they, like, I'm still kicked off at the airlines that we still pay money to check our bags. Um, the carry-ons, when... They did that because of the gas hikes. Well, gas is so low now, it's scary. I'm like scared to say something, because I don't want it to go back up. Um, <laughs> but why are they still charging us? Like, I feel like they're exploiting us, and they've already made plenty of money. Gas is the same. Like, I get mad. I feel like the airline flights, and I do this because I travel every week, but I feel like the flight should be the same price based on what class you're in. So if you're in, whatever, regular main cabin, this is the price. If you're in Delta Comfort, I think it's called, or Comfort Plus, you pay that price first class, you pay that price. But it should be a set price. It shouldn't matter if I'm flying during the holiday time. Why are you charging me double for the ticket? During the holiday time, when gas is the same price, like you're, you're flying, and I know from the business people in here, it's supply and demand, and I get it. But my gosh, I feel like we're totally getting worse. So does anybody agree we're totally getting screwed with the baggage at least? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, why would we fight back? Yeah, I just feel mad. And I do like, so I, I did the most dishonest thing. I had my, my luggage last week. So it's a rolling bag. And then I have a, you know, the, the personal one on top. So I'm only allowed two bags. I was like, whatever. I had another tote bag on the back of the thing. And then I put, because wintertime, my winter coat, like I'm hanging my coat on the thing. But I, I pushed it right through. I said, beep. And went off the road. I was like, I'm hanging on the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I had three bags on the thing. I can only get away with that in the summer. I mean, the winter. Yeah. Um, I will say, yeah. Right. Yeah. talking about this, I'm yeah. kind of both agreeing and disagreeing with uh, Ms. Harper is there's an issue of the problem with the public domain. There's about 50 million things that turned on to the public domain roughly uh, 30 years ago. And thanks to Mickey Mouse, we're probably never going to get things that should be public domain into the public domain back because Disney took the public domain, showed the use of it, but completely destroying it. Yes, and people should be paid, yes. Yeah. But there comes a point when it's no longer, okay, should they be paid? It is, when do we get up to actually touch it and play with it? That's true. We, for, um, we, well, but especially in the classical music world, we're having a lot of trouble with um, getting works from public, like classical books for them because those are still protected by copyright and trademark. Depending on which, what country you're in, it could take years for it to go into the public domain. So you actually have to pay money to just get your hands on that score. So whenever we play
without, I don't know, the Lovely. I completely agree. Um, so she has a test, she has a second. Um, when you were talking about the sliding scale, um, I was wondering about with Wikipedia, where it would be, there's no way to post information, there's nothing for sale, but then people can go in and edit. Right, so uh, remember that one of the criteria is that they're exchanging files. Um, so you would just have to try to make the argument that editing is, a, is sort of essential exchanging information. Um, so that's something that would be possible. Um, and then there's also the possibility of using Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to sort of collaborate with other people. Um, so you could use Wikipedia to
Um, but we're going to get to why we're going to be helpful with that. So yes, 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 problem, problem, problem. So essentially because the U.S. Supreme Court's jurisprudence on minimal context um, in the stream of commerce context is unclear, um, when applying the Saki case, the New Jersey Supreme Court chose uh, between applying, again, Justice O'Connor's test and applying Brennan's test. Um, so let's talk about these two theories of how you determine if there's minimal context in the stream of commerce situation. Again, where a company, a national distributor, has played a product into the stream of commerce, right? So in Saki, what was Justice Brennan's theory of what constitutes a meaningful context by the defendant, either attorney uh, Blank or Wallace? What was Justice Brennan's theory of what constitutes a meaningful context by the defendant in the stream of commerce case? It might be on the fourth paragraph on page 120. I know what that Prong to satisfy. So if you want to do the O'Connor test, like, or if you think the Brennan test is bad, like, you still have to go through fairness. So if it were foreseeable, and it, you know, you, you still have to go through that. Um, also, this like really allows for the, I think, unjust result in this case. Cause, so, uh, yeah, I really, do really disagree with O'Connor. Yes. And, in the back, yes, yes. I think foreseeability would have to be demonstrated through your actions also. Like, if you're, if you are actively advertising somewhere, then it's foreseeable that the product is going to end up there. Should be your actions are based on a reasonable person standard, like you said, where a reasonable person thinks it's foreseeable. But it didn't purposely. Okay. Yes. Well, when it comes to foreseeability, to me, I'm thinking once they ship the product, that should be foreseeability enough. That they once they enter the stream of commerce. Yeah. So you are. Okay. I mean, your um, foreseeability alone is not enough. So Brennan. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Um, from Brennan's perspective, <coughs> what I was thinking is if you like have a faulty product or something, like into like tort case, like you'd still be hard to like, come out with something that's meaningful. Like you can't sue them, and they're again like a large corporation, so like they should know these things when they're selling drugs across the state. Right? Yes, sir. I agree with what she said, and it's hard to draw a line to cut off, you know, where foreseeability is. Once you let it out, you know, who knows what you can do. And then the fairness thing, didn't you bring fairness in for the defendant because it's hard to travel? So now everybody, you, know, you fly every week, so you know how easy it is to get somewhere. It's not easy. Flights cost money. <laughs> <laughs> because it's expensive. Yes. I feel, now looking at everybody now, I'm feeling like one of the big problems with the Saki case is that there's one big factor that everybody seems to agree on. That's the size of the corporation. It seems like one theory would favor, would work best for larger corporations for them to work with some jurisdiction, and the other one would work better for smaller so corporations. Huh? So what, what, what do we do about this split? Yikes! School oh, juice. All right. So <laughs> another reason, um, and I want to make sure it's clear what we do for law and class purposes. That's what I'm done. But this, another thing that uh, a criticism rather from the Castro um, case is that because the Supreme Court opinion was divided, um, you know, if you look at the very first sentence of the case, you can see how many justices joined um, in the plurality, which is four, which is a lot. So if you count up the vote of the plurality with the vote of concurring um, justices in this case, you can see that the justices were essentially divided four, two, and three, right? Um, with the plurality and the two concurring um, justices agreeing that there was no jurisdiction split, not on why they reached the result. And so if you look at the plurality's opinion, which was written by Justice Kennedy, um, and then we'll talk about the concurring opinion. So um, what's the holding and reasoning of the plurality's opinion? Um, right for the plurality. Um, Justice Kennedy wants to make purposeful availment of the forum state the key to jurisdiction, which of course some of you were saying, finding that uh, McIntyre had not reached out to New Jersey, um, there was no jurisdiction, meaning bottom line. Um, for Justice Kennedy and the justices who joined him, um, they say that the relevant question um, is whether the defendant has followed a course of conduct, again, directed, um, 
kind of direct as a society or individual in the foreign state. Uh, Justice Kennedy in a plurality, sorry about that, said again, foreseeability alone, not enough. Uh, they essentially reject Justice Brennan's concurring opinion and support, um, or rather, Seth O'Connor's. Uh, but then we have the concurring opinion, <laughs> um, which is joined by Justice Breyer and Justice Alito. Um, and the point they're trying to make is that they say, look, we agree with the plurality um, that there is no jurisdiction over the defendant in this case. Uh, again, we disagree with the rationale. So Justice Breyer and Alito refused to endorse the rationale um, because they said they found that a case which involved a single sale of a product in the foreign state was easily decided on the basis of precedent, um, and that McIntyre's contacts were just too slim to justify jurisdiction. They didn't feel like they had enough of a presence in the state of New Jersey. Remember, only four of their machines got to the state of New Jersey. Um, Breyer and Alito did not think it was necessary um, to even resolve the Asahi split. I disagree. Tell us what you want to adopt, Brennan or O'Connor. But Justice Breyer and Alito said, look, we don't have to resolve the Asahi split. Um, there's no opinion that suggests that a more flexible standard um, may be necessary, particularly um, when dealing with modern issues of such as the internet, they insist that the Castro is not the proper vehicle for making this determination. This is not the case we want to use uh, to determine uh, the split uh, that we see for in O'Connor versus Brennan's stance. Uh, so they think it's basically not wise to adopt this uh, broad rule without considering uh, modern day consequences. Um, the dissent, we have uh, Justice Ginsburg, uh, Social Mayor, Social Mayor, I said her name wrong, I apologize, and Kagan. Um, so the dissent says, look, we disagree with oh, all you people, you all got it wrong, right? The dissent says, um, you know, they didn't discuss the stream of commerce at all, but they simply um, endorsed Justice Brennan, right? Um, standard from Asahi, and they said, you know, we just need to focus on fairness and reasonableness. Um, and that solved our problem. Um, they say that the uh, U.S. plaintiffs at a disadvantage when compare it to the European plaintiffs or individual because um, under um, European law, there would be personal jurisdiction. They say, so we don't even want to consider that. Let's just consider, is it fair, is it reasonable, based on the facts, and let the court make a decision. So we don't need to even consider foreseeability and all that stuff. Let's consider the travel costs for, the, you know, for that European uh, foreign corporation to come. Let's consider you know, um, you know, the inconvenience. Let's consider the state's interest. Let's consider the foreign corporation's interest. Let's just look at the unique facts of each case and decide if it's fair or reasonable. And we don't need to go back and forth. We don't even need to address the Asahi split. Um, and so the takeaway from this case uh, is basically that because there's no majority in this case, um, it's still, the court still has not established a clear standard of what minimum context is necessary uh, for a stream of commerce context. Like, how do you determine uh, minimum context in a stream of commerce context? It is not clear, unfortunately. Um, so therefore, it means for exam purposes, when you see a stream of commerce question, uh, you'll utilize both the plurality's test um, and essentially Justice O'Connor's test from Asahi. So you're going to say, if this was, I'll ask you on the exam, if you were uh, stating the outcome of this case best based on Justice Brennan's um, stance, you know, what's the outcome? And you'll be like, oh, we're seeing the other room. Or I'll say, if you were assessing this fact pattern from Justice O'Connor's stance, what is your, you know, what is the outcome? So I'll tell you which one, because there's nothing else I can do because it's not settled law. Um, for practice purposes, typically certain jurisdictions will be more likely or favorable uh, towards Brennan versus O'Connor. So you need to look at that jurisdiction, uh, the case law, recent case law, with similar case fact patterns and say, oh, okay, the justices in the, in the Seventh Circuit really tend to adopt Brennan's stance. So you're gonna pose your argument based on Brennan's stance in the most favorable light of your client. That also kind of pushes you to do forum shopping. But I'd be like, well, if I have a choice where I could technically file in the Western District of Kentucky or the Northern District of Ohio, one has O'Connor's, has adopted O'Connor's stance, the other has adopted Brennan's, well, Brennan's is gonna be more favorable to my client's fact pattern. So I'm gonna say, oh, we need to tell my client we need to file in Ohio, Northern District Court. But you see how the, how the strategy evolved? And, I mean, you can literally, and I'm gonna bring in, I hope Rudy uh, Cooper's available. He seems he was like my civil procedure rock student. Um, and he's out doing amazing stuff. But he always, when I run into him, he brags. I was like, I out lawyered, you know, senior attorneys because I beat him on procedure. I mean, we had a weak case, but, they, you know, I beat him on procedure. Um, so, like, like, a lot of times when you have too many cases and you're overwhelmed, a smaller firm, you miss deadlines. So, like, to re respond, so someone's filed a motion to dismiss and you don't file it, your response in time, we call judgment. The other, you know, so you can win cases just on strategy and procedure, even if you have a weak case. So, this, this Rudy, it's better when you hear from your own peer because he's got great examples, but, I mean, he literally wins cases on procedure. It's great. So, it's really important. I'm not saying that because I teach it here, but honestly, it is. All right. Um, so now we are in the Castro case. So we um, will start our next class with the with your case. Any questions before you close your books about class today at all? Everybody cool with Brennan and O'Connor? Yes. Uh what I got out of the dissent was that um, the British manufacturer is already of like the national market, mm -hmm. and New Jersey is a part of the nation, and so that's fine. Um, so I, because I supported O'Connor, but I also support the dissent in this case. Is that an okay view for me to have, or should I shift? No, so you, no, it's an okay view for me to have. Right. Right. Yeah, so you don't have to shift. Right. And even for practice purposes, you don't have to shift. You just gotta write that same argument in your brief. You're, you're, you are accurate in your legal analysis. Got it. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, Neil, they were the top producer of Scrabble, so if you're like, so like, they were, in, you know what I mean? Like, Reasonability plus volume. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 all right, I'll see you all next Monday. Oh,